So I'm sitting here with Courtney Osterfeld. Um, she's the director of the uh, Team Pad. The Launchpad launch launch Team pad, Center. You got it. You know, I always say it wrong. I, okay. I want to twist it up every <laughs> time, okay. but it's the Launchpad Team Center. Correct. And, you know, Courtney and I met back in 2018 at a meeting and got to know Courtney. And, uh, and then she kind of reached out to Subaru and said, hey, you know, we're looking for sponsors. We're looking for fundraisers. And then we kind of took off from there. Well, and actually, um, so out of at our networking meeting, I made a pitch about um, what the Launchpad needed, which was support for youth, and how we were starting a new program called Ground Control, which was about like monthly contributions. That's right. And you said, I want to be your first member, yeah. um, which yeah. which I just thought was, well, A, very on brand for you, because you're so community, you're so engaged in the community, and so loving and kind and generous, and um, also it meant the world to us, because you really became our first business in town to step up and say we want to engage in transactional giving and we had had a few a realtor really start the program but we hadn't had anybody else jump on and it was once Finley Subaru jumped on and said we're, we're in um, wow it, it just caught like wildfire and we've had so many people join in and it's meant so much to the launch pad yeah that's cool it's, you know I remember going down busy at the little at the old place yes you know, describe what that old place was, Stanley. Yeah. So the Launchpad has, you know, changed locations several times. Um, but the place that we were at when you and I met was an 1,100-square-foot house. And it was a really cute historical home in Prescott, Arizona that, that we turned into a teen center. Um, but you can imagine 40 teens in an 1,100-square-feet foot building, which you had been in there when it was busy. Oh, yeah. It was wall-to-wall -wall kids. Totally. And I'm telling you, it was, it was exciting. It was. I mean, there was kids fixing lunch and, and yeah. was, you know, there was just something going on in you, much like here. I mean, they're kind of, I think, toning it down for us right now. Yeah. It, normally, there's bands going yep. and musical instruments yeah. and conversations and all kinds of things. Totally. And here, sometimes it feels really quiet in comparison to the old space because yeah. the old space was so, you know, like a one-room house. And we were all on top of each other practically. And here, I'll go, wow, we're really slow. And then I'll go around and count heads in each of the rooms. And I'm like, actually, we've got over 40 kids here. It's just that <laughs> finally people, the kids who want to be quiet well, can go upstairs. Down. The kids who want to do art can go in the art studio. And um, yeah, so we can really meet everybody's needs, which is really special. Well, on our end, you know, at Finley Subaru, it's been really great to see the growth, you know. And, you know, it's funny because Saul, you know, our marketing manager, has to remind me all the time about, you know, it's because of what we do that they're able to do a lot of so this. So true. So true. Uh, that now this new, before we get into this new building, what exactly do you do at the sure. Center? Yeah, so um, we do after, what we're most well known for is drop-in programming or after school slash out of school programming. So that's like, we send a shuttle to the big schools in the area. We pick kids up every single day and bring them here. And it's optional. They, you know, obviously if they want to come, they can come. If not, some of them have sports. Tie them or nothing. nothing like They're that. Not kids. Napped. Nope, nope. <laughs> yeah. So so they all get on a shuttle and come here. And then there's programs they can plug into. There's free tutoring. Some days it's just a, a relaxed day and we don't have anything big happening. And some days we have an artist coming in to do a guest art presentation. We have a music club where kids are learning how to play the drums or play the guitar, forming their own band. We have leadership programs. Every Friday we've got over 20 kids up in our conference room doing um, leadership training and leadership programs, figuring out how how to better the Prescott community. Um, so, all that to say, you know, we have special fundraisers for each of these programs, for like our outdoor programs, our tutoring programs, but ground control, which is what Finley Subaru is a part of, 
is just consistent monthly um, contributions that we can really rely on. And those are the contributions that allow us to do things like um, when we have extra kids show up, provide snack for everybody, um, take get an extra bus to take a whole bunch of kids camping, um, go on the five-day canoe trip. It's, it's, not, it's just reliable funding that we don't have to stress over, and it allows us to really make sure that every single kid who wants to participate can participate, which is really, really cool. Yeah. And, you know, too, I've been part of, like, taking the girls up to girls camp yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, seeing them all up there. That was a lot of so fun. So fun. And then providing vehicles out mm -hmm. for your... Uh, Trek for Teens, Trek which for is teens. coming up again here yep. in a month. Yep, and yeah. I think we're on again oh, for finding awesome. vehicles for that. We just need to know how many vehicles because totally. you're growing. Yeah, oh, you yeah. Know, and everything's going like crazy. Um, you know, one of the things I was really impressed on, you touched on a little bit, is the leadership. Yeah. So we were at a fundraiser, and I couldn't tell you the name of it, but you probably know. Yeah. But the teens were conducting it. Oh, totally. They were the ones doing the whole thing. Mm -hmm. They were the ones speaking. It wasn't It wasn't you guys. And no. then, I think, aren't some of the board members yes. teens? Yeah. So tell us about that a little so bit. So we call ourselves a youth-driven space, and there aren't a lot of them, actually. And that's one of the things that really sets us apart from, like, the Boys and Girls Club or the YMCA. And those programs do wonderful things in the community, too. Yeah. But it was special is that we have teens who sit on our board of directors, an equal amount of youth as adults, and they have voting responsibilities. So they're actually covered by our DNO insurance, oh, wow. which for anybody who's ever been on a board knows that that's a big deal. Yep. Um, so they they help at that level of leadership. They're helping govern the entire organization. So they're helping with hiring practices and when you know approving the budget and where should our um, strategic plan take us next year and all that sort of stuff so and those teens are so loyal so on top of it is so um, committed to the to the mission of the Launchpad Teen Center which is really cool and they really I mean the intention of that isn't so much it is about their experience but it's also about holding us accountable to the people we serve and the people we serve are the youth and so it's really important that we help position them in leadership and decision-making positions so that we remain accountable to them I've always said that's what the school system needs that's what people they need to be taught real life things mm -hmm. you know things that are um, that they can apply to their daily lives and I think that's what you do here yeah I mean you're you're making citizens and and people uh, you know out of teens, you know, a responsible adult. Totally. Right? Well, and it's even like our cafe, um, which is a new new program as a result of this building, is all about teen apprentices. So they get paid to work an eight-month apprenticeship and basically learn how to run a small business. So they're learning. See, I didn't know you paid them. Oh yeah. So they wow. they they work regular shifts, um, and it's amazing because a lot of them, we have several teens, you know, who are either on the autism spectrum or are just terrified of going for that first job interview right. or have tried to get jobs and have really struggled with getting a job and this is the whole point of this program is how, let this be your first experience like it's okay yeah. if you mess up it's a learning opportunity you will still get paid because I don't want them to have to choose between pushing carts at fries and doing something that's really deeply meaningful to them right. um, and some of our kids are in a financial situation where they would have to choose between that so I want them to just be able to come in get this you know unique in-depth learning experience where it's very it's like a it's like a family sort of atmosphere amongst the kids who work in the cafe. They really help each other, support each other. They have to maintain a certain GPA in order to work in the cafe, um, and then they get to then they get to move up into leadership positions. So when they leave their eight month apprenticeship, they can say, "I've managed a team of my peers. I've trained somebody. I know how to do inventory." They've got a resume. Totally. They exactly. Got a resume. I'm sure you show them how to build a resume. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. And Thing. You know, and what I like it also, it's not a free-for-all. I yeah. mean, sometimes hey, hearing you talk, it's like, hey, this is a place to hang out. Now, there's rules, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Cool. Yes, Cause adults are always concerned. Totally. No, we definitely have rules. But the other great thing that I think a lot of teens are concerned about is 
Because sometimes it's like you break a rule and you become defined by that rule. Right. And we want our teams to understand that you're, you are not defined by your mistakes. You're defined by what you do after you make a mistake. That's right. So while we do have rules, we, we are always welcoming youth back in. Like, how can we um, restore your relationship with the launch pad? And how can we help you overcome that and learn from it and realize that you are more than, than your actions? Um, I can't remember the exact saying, but I know, and you probably know it already, but a, a failure is only, only a failure if you don't learn from it. Totally, you totally. Uh, so water under the bridge, you move on, you have experience. Absolutely. And, and then not only do you learn from your, you know, your experience, but right. you can help others. Yeah, and in you fact, know. we have a team who who used to come here, and he still comes here. He's been coming since he was in middle school. Now he's in high school. But he, when he first started coming here, he really struggled with some anger management issues, right. um, which made sense because he, he had a really, really challenging life. Um, family situation was really challenging. He had to grow up really quick for being 13. And so he'd come into our space, and, and sometimes he'd really be feeling all that anger. Yeah. And so he talks now. He, that kid has learned to manage his emotions. He channels it. Oh, man. Yeah. It's incredible. And he helps other teams when he notices them getting mad. He'll pull them aside and say, you know what? You can just ask for what you need. Do you need to take some space? Do you need to take a deep breath? <laughs> it's really <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, too, uh, it was really fun because, as you know, I have a home over in Utah. Yeah. And one of my good friends over there, um, it was fun to come over here and see his grandson. Oh, yes. You yeah. know, Kate. Yes. And uh, so tell special. us, uh, you know, although that's a little bit of a... Sure. That's a tough story. But it's beautiful. Yeah, so Kate, so Caden Himes um, started coming to the launch pad when he was in middle school and was really involved. He really wanted to have like a music, a space for teens to build bands and to learn how to put on a music show that was substance free, alcohol free, that kids who were 13 and 14 years old could come and play and know they'd be safe. Focus on music. Totally. So he, he started creating these music shows that were incredible and they'd bring together like three or four bands and we would let teens all share the, a couple of the door fee. Um, so anyhow, Caden's dream was really to graduate from college and come back to the launch pad and help curate music shows and, and help run music programming. And then unfortunately in 2020, Caden was driving home to his to his grand, friend's funeral, to your or friend's his funeral. Yeah, who had passed just that morning. Just that morning and yeah. And it was uh, and he it got, was low. it was it was uh, I will never forget where I was when I got that phone call, what was happening. But yeah, he um, he got caught in a snowstorm and um, and, and passed away. So Tracy, Caden's mom, lost both her, her son and her dad, and her dad in one day. Yeah, tragic. Yeah. So tell us about the wall So this behind. mural is really in honor of Caden because Caden, Caden helped helped through the escrow process because he was on our board of directors of right. purchasing this building helped raise money to purchase the building we're in. And his whole vision was that he wanted this stage to be right here where we could host incredible music shows. So Caden's sister, um, who's also been involved in Launchpad and now works for us, and she's a remarkable artist. And so, you know, she created this mural in honor of Caden. And Caden was this vibrant, joyful, like almost very tall, like nearly seven foot tall young man, lanky, really thin. And so and he loved the launch pad. He loved Prescott. He loved um, David Bowie. So we've got this this lanky, artsy astronaut, which is floating above Prescott, watching over all of us, which is Caden. And then the, the lightning bolt in the corner is for David Bowie. And so it's really a tribute to him. And his Caden's name is actually carved in the concrete over there, facing where the stage goes. So it's special. He's always with us. And, and we have this amazing stage that um, we were able to, his, his family set up a fund in his name, and we were able to purchase a stage. It's portable and it goes out here, it can fit a huge band on it. Um, so we've already had a music show, we're going to continue to have more music shows. Awesome. There's so much good that comes out of what you're doing, and that's why we partner with you, is mm -hmm. I felt like it was so important 
to the community. And like you say, it's different. It's different. There's a lot of organizations, you know, the Boys and Girls Clubs and all the different organizations. It's kind of like it takes a village, mm -hmm. and this is filling a niche yeah. that just is awesome. Awesome. And, you know, it's just, like, it's just awkward and hard to be a teenager sometimes, and you're really trying to figure out who you are. And it's not our job as adults to, to push them really in any one direction. It is our job, though, to hold space for them and to love them no matter who they are. Exactly. And accept them and just provide space for them to walk through the awkward years of adolescence and figure out what and their we've greatest all been potential there, is. Right? Yeah. I mean, we've all been there. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, and nobody skips that step, you no. know. And it's yeah. really funny because you'll go to a, a reunion. In fact, I have my 45th wow. class That's reunion. So cool. I know. A wow is the yeah. age, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was somebody was kind to me. They told me, you know, you don't look 63. And you do not look 63. Thanks for lying. <laughs> I, that's what I love about you. But, you know, the, the beauty of this whole thing is, is that, uh, you know, this teen center does so much for the community, and it does, it gives them that safe place, and it does um, teach them all the values and all the, the correct principles, and, and let's face it, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough growing up this day and age. It is, yeah. You know, there's a lot out there, and granted, when you and I were, when I was younger, <laughs> and then your generation, yeah. you know, there was drugs and there was all that, but, uh, you know, it seems like there's more. Yeah. I don't know, it just seems like things are more intense. Things are more intense, and there's also more division in our community as a whole, and yeah. teens are watching adults behave in ways that aren't um, very kind, and right. that's getting replicated in their communities and, and so that's something you teach also kindness yes totally you and know. it's amazing because they'll walk to the launch pad and you'll see them walking in like separate groups where they're not talking to each other and then they walk through our doors and then they turn around and they go hey how was your day <laughs> <laughs> and it's like that's okay awesome. you just had to get in, in here to let go of your differences yeah. and then see each other as humans but we really we really try to push a message of positivity and we just recently really like really we were taking it so seriously that all of our staff are, are even wearing these shirts that say you are worthy you are kind you are loved you are, loved. You are, <laughs> you awesome. are enough and just just to, they're getting so much neg negativity everywhere else like when they walk through the doors here I want them to be able to take off their armor to, to really be vulnerable and to experience joy and acceptance. And, oh, that's where the yeah. growth is. Yeah. You know, that's where the growth. When you don't have to jump over all the hurdles, you know, you can really learn. And, you yeah. know, speaking of learning, you know, this, again, this just ties into yeah. what Subaru loves and stands behind. You know, Subaru, I always joke and I say Subaru loves everything. <laughs> you know, love is a part of, part of yes. you know, we love learning and we love totally. the earth and we love animals and you know all these different things but loves learning and this is loves learning month yeah so oh, it's wow. really cool you know we're doing uh, giving away twelve thousand five hundred dollars five hundred dollars to 25 teachers that's incredible that uh, help them with classroom supplies Amazing. and then also a little gift box and everything we so ought to make cool. sure one of those gift box makes it down here but oh, it just has some supplies in it and well we'll put it that. to use right in our oh, academic mentorship do. room yeah. which i don't even think i mentioned when in what we do but we have you know we have free tutoring and free academic mentorship and the cool thing about academic mentorship is that it's really not about i mean it is about tutoring but what we realize is that often what's getting in the way of a kid learning uh, is their self-confidence or maybe their backpack is a mess or nobody's home to, to show their grades or their progress to. Um, so our academic mentorship program is really all about the 360 approach to helping kids succeed in school. Wow. And that program's really awesome. So we'll, you know, that gift box will get 
use. Put to use immediately. <laughs> well, every time I talk to you, I learn something more about the, the Launchpad Teen Center, you know, and it's just no way, and you keep evolving bigger and bigger <laughs> and try. covering more and more kids and everything. Yeah. So, hey, on behalf of Subaru and Finley Subaru Prescott, we just want to thank you for all you do. Oh, thank you so much, Mac. Thank you for all you do and for supporting us. Always. We're here for you. I appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Thanks.